My name is Liam O'Brien. I'm a visual artist living in Brooklyn, New York. My parents, Terry and Camille O'Brien, were circus performers when they were young. They traveled all over the country. They did it for 20 years. Uh, they were on various shows, the Clyde Beatty Show, the Tarzan, um, All-Star Circus. Uh, so this is the life I grew up into, uh, being on stage. My parents, uh, they had a juggling act, uh, slack wire and unicycle. So my older brother and I did this uh, for many years. Uh, eventually my parents wanted to retire and get off the road. Being on the road was a little too stressful for them. So they started working at Walt Disney World um, in the Dumbo Circus Parade. So when I came of age, I started working at Disney World as a costume character. So uh, my job as a costume character was to go out and hug children and sign autographs. I would be Tigger or Goofy, multiple characters, and I was in the parades and shows and I did a couple commercials. Um, and seeing that type of reality, I'll say in quotes. Uh, so being a different person and putting on its different costume and you kind of get to hide in it and people think you're someone else. Uh, it's very circus-like in a way. Later on in my career I worked for uh, numerous production companies painting backdrops for mainly the theme parks in Florida. So at that point in time I became a part of, instead of working in a theme related environment, I became an individual who actually constructed it or was a part of the construction. When I moved to New York, I got a job working for the artist Takashi Murakami, the Japanese artist, um, who is known as blending high and low culture. So, based off of my past experiences, he thought I'd be helpful to him. So I'm sort of hitting both spectrums, or I have hit both spectrums. So low art and now high art. And uh, in my own work, I feel that my past experiences, I am grabbing bits and pieces of it, a little bit of circus, a little bit of Disney. Um, and that is what I use to create my own work. So. So sketchbooks, sketchbooks have been very important uh, in my art making process. I, I picked up the habit of doing sketchbooks uh, when I was in undergraduate school. Um, I like to keep themed, different theme books. Uh, so all my ideas, I, I try to put them all in the book and keep the book uh, theme related and use all the page uh, from back to the front. So my first book, I started, I believe, in 1997, and I worked on it for four or five years. And uh, a lot of the beginning imagery is when I was in school, and I was doing a lot of printmaking, uh, doing the story of Animal Farm. And then it goes into when I started working at Walt Disney World as a costume character. So I draw the characters, or I just draw what was around me. And then as this, the book evolved later on, I, uh, I just started to do random abstract imagery and putting them together and adding cartoons and taking stuff and adding it out, you know, pulling it out. So uh, towards the very end of the book, I would go to Universal Studios and just sketch the, the buildings. So artists like Monet would go to the lake and paint lily pads, but in my world that didn't exist, so I would go to a theme park and paint the constructed environments and uh, what I saw around me.
the snowman book was started in the late 90s um, the original snowman idea came from a, a Christmas sculpture I went to my parents house and they had a sculpture of a snowman and I was sitting there with the dog and I started to draw it and it was reminiscent of the Calvin and Hobbes stories that I, I enjoyed reading in the newspaper so I started to think it'd be great if this kid created a snowman and his whole goal in life is to take over the planet but he's made out of snow so like there's this irony to the whole thing so based off that idea I'm like I'm gonna do a book about this so I started to uh, start from the beginning and how the snowman was created and how he became intelligent and then I had to figure out how he was gonna survive the summer so I had to create a fort for him and as the book was evolving it became very much like um, a lot of line work it became even more intense the line work and I, I became more interested in pop-up books because as a, a kid I really enjoyed pop-up books so I wanted to kind of add those elements to the story things moving and things opening up uh, and make it more interactive um, so I, at this point the the snowman to make it through the summer he falls asleep in his fort and I'm doing the dream sequence right now where he's dreaming uh, which is all done in graphite um, and eventually he's gonna wake up and continue with his goal of taking over the planet but again this started in maybe 99 so it's taken 10 years so far and I, I hope to finish the story at some point but um, w what happens is I get distracted with other projects so it kind of gets on hold but I always go back to it and um, it's uh, unconsciously becoming uh, an audio autobiography in a weird way the big ducks were inspired by the movie Batman Returns. It was a Tim Burton film. Uh, I went and seen the movie, and if if you'd seen it, there in the in the book in the film, the penguin is raised by circus people, and as his evil scheme is to steal all the children in Gotham City. Uh, so he's driving around town in this giant rubber duck car. It's a boat. And when I saw it on screen, I was I was really inspired by that. I really liked I really liked it. I don't know why. This is when I was working at Disney World. So I had this dream like it'd be great if I could just do giant drawings of rubber ducks and hang them in a room. And you could go into this place. It would be like going to Disney. You'd go in there and you'd be surrounded by these ducks and they're all smiling at you. And they were all bright and colorful and it would just be a very happy place. And I, I just thought it would be really interesting to see. So uh, when I had the time and money, I eventually started production of doing uh, these giant rubber ducks. Uh, they're all done on five foot by six foot pa pieces of paper with uh, dry pastel. And I have models. I've been collecting rubber ducks for a long time. So I would hold the, the rubber duck in my hand and I would go back and forth from the paper uh, to draw its likeness. I wanted it pretty accurate, just like uh, with a lot of my portraitures. Um, so at this point I have 18, well about 20. Uh, they take around 40 hours to make one. Uh, and I can't do them too quick because I, I do a lot of rubbing with my fingers so it, I had some problems with my fingers bleeding so I had to kind of stretch it out so I didn't do it all at once but uh, when I did actually have the exhibition of the giant ducks it was I, I would say very similar to my own feelings about being in a circus about being working at Disney World again it was drawing upon all my life experiences